Yeah, it's going to be interesting. What's up? Be sure to put all your thoughts and questions into the chat. We'll try and answer them to the best of our abilities at the end of the show. And don't forget, while you're down in the description, check out our giveaway. We'll announce the winners of that about 45 minutes into the show. Other than that, let's get right into it, man, with some style consultations. Let's yeah. do a gong first, let's though. Gong Give him a gong. There we go. Oh, that was a soft one. That was a nice one, though. It had some good, to uh, some good tones to it. All right. <laughs> so can we get our first guy up on deck, Randa? Hey, look, who's in the chat? It's Carlos. What's up? All there right, you go. so who is this guy? All right, all right, all right. Sorry, just making sure y'all can hear me. Sweet. Who do we have here? We have Matthew Savoy. Matthew Savoy. And he wrote quite a bit, so here okay. we go. All right. Let's just dive right in. We have greetings from Beard Brand and Alliance Show. Okay. Thank you for great videos and information. I'm 45 years old and have been growing a beard for about two years altogether. Before that, I had a bald head and a goatee for probably 20 years. Hey, it's a good style. I never took the beard seriously and kept it trimmed short. I just wanted to try something different. Okay. About three months ago, I decided to start doing some research and found you guys. I decided that I wanted to set a goal of growing something that looked like something in between a Bandholz or Brzezinski, and he attached a reference photo. Okay. Not a giant beard, but something a little longer that I have now, mm -hmm. and where my mustache is pretty prominent. Okay. I think you'll be able to see that I'm trying to grow my jawline higher up. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just in a weird stage. Okay. I think I need to just be a little bit more patient and let everything grow out more. I've been trying to get things trimmed and get evened out and get rid of the split ends every three weeks, but that might be, be, that might be too frequently. I've tried mustache wax and pomade to try and start trimming this mustache, but I have not had much luck. Also, I'm aggravated because one side of the mustache seems to be more full than the other side. So what do you think? Is there a chance of me reaching the goal, or do you have an I any ideas or suggestions that may look better? Respectfully, Matt. Okay, so what we'll do now is I'll describe Matt, and you want to take over the style consultation for sure. the beginning? Sure. Cool, so Matt's a strapping young man of 45 years old. Bald head, rectangular frame glasses, and I would say a oval-shaped face. Now, this beard's actually very dense. What we're going to notice, the main thing about it, is the two-tone colors. Sort of a brunette color. Uh, no patches in this whatsoever that I can see. You may think differently but <laughs> <laughs> um then in the goatee it's actually sort of a silverish white color really nice good uh, distinguished color in there kind of roundish shape to the beard um cheek lines are left a little bit natural looks like there's a little bit of kind of a jagged line going on some dips and curves valleys and peaks whatever you want to call it either way it looks like it's not super manicured and i like that um Mustache grows right over the top of the lip. Looks really tight. I like it. Very full. Again, I don't see any patches in this. And uh, he said what he was going for is somewhere between a Brzezinski and a Bandholz. So nothing super long, but something mm. interesting. Okay? And then remember, he had his mustache growing a little bit less on one side. I don't really see what he means, but I guess for our right side of what we can see the picture, it does look maybe just a little bit shorter than the left side. So what do you think about this, Sylvester? Yeah, man. Uh, Mark is, is our... Matt. Matt. Wait. Yeah, there we go. Every time, man. <laughs> Every time. Matt. Man, dude, your beard is full of patches. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that with a lot of sarcasm. Uh, my friend, you have got a really gnarly looking beard, man. Yeah. Uh, like this and this this is a pretty dense beard, like Jack said. Mm -hmm. uh, and kudos to you uh, because the bald head and big beard look is pretty rad and it complements you really well. I was noticing in the chat, pardon me, and uh, for those who are of our audio listeners, this is a live stream over on our YouTube channel currently. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're catching this uh, by way of uh, a download, uh, make sure you hit us up on the YouTube channel at some point in time in the journey. But uh, but you're uh, we're able to see Mark's... Mark, Matt. right? <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. It's so close. Matt. There he is. We're able to see Matt's... Uh, you know style here and he's got it like a like we were saying he's got a bald head mm -hmm. and he's got a pretty nice full beard uh and his goal is to go after uh something between a, a banholtz and a brzezinski and, yeah. and really i think you're accomplishing that pretty well the only thing i would advise is if you're looking to accomplish that look what will really bring that look in together is a little bit of styling uh and i don't mean styling bomb mm -mm. Uh, because we all know my favorite product here is sea salt spray, uh, but styling in, in the form of bringing in like a blow dryer. Mm -hmm. I think a blow dryer would really, really help uh, oh, yeah. our friend here uh, achieve that look 
uh, not so that you straighten out the hair, but so that you can kind of shape that beard a little bit. And as you grow it out a little more, mm -hmm. which I think I'd be curious to see or know if we're blowing this, uh, blow, using a blow dryer in this beard, because either a, if we are this, he needs to let it grow a little bit more Yeah. or B, if he's not, I'm curious to see what the length, how much length there is actually on that beard. Uh, mm -hmm. cause you might be able to achieve that look if you're not using a blow dryer right now, Matt. <clears throat> so, uh, I would use a blow dryer and kind of, uh, kind of take a, uh, maybe like a round brush, yeah. uh, a round brush and a blow dryer and set it so that you can kind of blow out that hair a bit, straighten it out a bit and, uh, not too straight, but kind of just, it, it's going to add a little bit of length to your beard if you, mm -hmm. if you're not doing that already. So, uh, I also think, uh, a little bit of uh, mustache wax in the mustache will really help Yep. define give some definition to that stash and kind of help give it that distinguished look from the mustache to the uh the actual beard uh but man i think you're rocking the style pretty well it looks like you're rocking it really confidently i personally would like to see some round shaped glasses on our friend matt here yeah because i think uh like a th uh, like a professor i don't know the name technical name for it but like a professor type of uh, glass I get where what you're saying. maybe it's yeah. a little smaller circle mm -hmm. uh would really complement and tie the whole look in together for me personally okay and then uh maybe uh if you're rocking a bald head uh, you know, one of my goals this year is to wear less, wear less hats, <laughs> uh, but I just, they're just kind of embedded in my style. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, I would throw on a hat for, for Matt as well. I think and, it'd work with him. Yeah. And I mean more of a, like a Peaky Blinders type hat. Oh, like a uh, flat cap. Yeah. Like a flat cap or okay. a newsboy hat, uh, style, mm -hmm. uh, would really kind of, uh, look really cool. It looks like, uh, you might, I feel like you are a judge without your uh, wardrobe on. You might be standing in, <laughs> in a judge's seat, man. There is something very judicial <laughs> about that picture, isn't it's there? Very judicial about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, uh, but th that's my take. Uh, other than that, man, you look great rocking mm -hmm. it. Uh, I like the, I like the t-shirts that don't have any kind of like, um, images or prints on them. Yeah. Uh, you know, every now and then it's cool to have throw one in your, in your wardrobe, but mm -hmm. I like the, uh, I like the uh, the soft tone of this brown. It really complements your your the colors in your beard. Yeah, and so uh, yeah. Keep you it know what's up. interesting, Sylvester? When I look at Matt's beard, you know he's saying he's going for kind of a mixture between the Van Holtz and the Brzezinski. But when I look at the texture of his beard, it actually reminds me more of a mixture between Jeff's and Carlos's, especially Carlos's with the the way that his color comes in mm -hmm. right there in the goatee. I really like that, and I think that Carlos actually might be a better role model, at least a style role model for Matt here. Oh, and the only yeah. reason I say that is because if, if he continues to grow it out, unless he's doing something like using the brown brush and the blow dryer every day, like <clears throat> Greg does or like uh, Eric does on occasion, he can really nail that Carlos Costa look. He really could. I like it. I really like it. And in doing that, I think that he'll spend less time, you know, getting ready in the morning because, you know, Brzezinski's got a very stylized version of the beard. And so does Eric to an extent. I mean, Eric likes to sort of let it go natural, but in doing that he has those natural beard waves and he has the uh, the almost natural curls in his handlebar whereas yeah. gray or whereas jeff and uh carlos really don't they have yeah. more of that laying flat beard that has all sort of that coarser hair and i think if i was going to recommend anything for matt one it would be that hat i like that hat idea That's yeah really nice but yeah. two is I think he should get some, not styling balm, but utility. <laughs> you, see, you got that styling on my head. No, I think he should put some uh, utility balm in there. because Oh, I think for he, sure. If he's going to put, if I'm seeing this texture right, if he's going to put beard oil in there, he's going to get a shine to it. And I think this kind of guy, you know, I think Matt wants a little bit more of a matte texture. Mm. Yeah? You know? Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. My recommendation is if you go with the utility balm, Matt, then uh, take it in your hands and take, you really need to start out with just like a pinky pinkies amount just a, yeah, like, like a, a pinky nail like a dime amount. Mm -hmm. just a small amount take it rub mm -hmm. it in your hands uh and then apply it to your like to your elbows and to mm. your skin yeah man uh maybe around the neck where your pulse areas are and then take that residual that's in your hand and add it into the beard you know what i was gonna say he can even take it and put it on the top of his head yeah oh absolutely that's, that's a mahesh that's trick a, right there it's a really good moisturizer for your mm -hmm. hair for your skin but if you're rocking a bald head, yeah, uh, it's a really good moisturizer, even for for your scalp. Oh man, I put I that agree, stuff man. in my hair. I use I'm putting that in my hair almost every day now. Before yeah. I put uh, finish it up with some styling balm and just a little bit of that sea salt spray that you love. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and unless you've got anything else to say, man, I think we've got Matt in a nutshell right here. Do yeah, you have man. anything else for Matt, Randa? 
Um, so I have the attached photo that sure. he added. So that's the style that he's kind of going for. Okay. Beard wise. Yeah, man. I think using a blow dryer is really going to be yeah. key if you're not. And if you are already, then let it grow out a little longer. You'll get, you'll get there. Yeah. At least give it another month if you want to do that. Yeah. Because Eric's rocking some serious length in this picture. I think this is probably Eric's four to six month beard. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of getting it back to that length too. Yeah. It actually is kind of in that style right now. Anyway. So that'll do it for Matt. You want to give him a gong, man? And we'll move on to style consultation number two. Let's gong him. Gong him. It's getting harder every week to reach that thing, isn't it? All right. <laughs> got a soft one again. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that, though. Ooh, look at this guy. Woo! All righty. Game of Thrones, baby. Yeah, I was going to say Polar. He's from the north. Mm -hmm. See, here we have Joe. <laughs> man, I wish I was where Joe was. I'm sweating, boy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Screw Texas. You're going to uh, love the Texas summer again. <laughs> All right, so Joe writes, Dear Beard Brand, I'm currently three months in on a yeared grow out, as well my as man. about two months in on growing out my hair for a year. Okay. Traditionally, I grow my beard out for the winter as I am a year-round cyclist that lives in Canada. Wow. Canadian. As you will notice from the first picture, my beard is utilitarian in nature, so that's this picture shown here. Okay. However, I'm very interested in growing a yeard, and I'm looking for both advice and thoughts on this from Beard Brand and your viewers. Sure. So here's what I would like to know. A, I have a job, work as a team leader for a social services agency, agency okay. and I meet with both clients, business partners, and service founders. Okay. Can I look professional with a wild beard mane and long hair? Interesting. I'm fairly stylish and dressed professionally, so that part is not a concern. Okay. And then B, is there any thoughts to styles to try along the way? Slicked back hair, 70s blowouts, or beard styles? Now any thoughts talking. would be helpful. <laughs> okay. In regards to me, I'm 46 year old. Okay. I'm 46 years old. Okay. <laughs> just one year old. And <laughs> my name is Joe. And I traditionally, okay. and traditionally my beard style has been to just grow it for the winter and shave it off in the spring. However, I think this year the goal is full blown mountain man style. Hey. hey. From All the haunting right. beard to the year, I like yeah, it. Man. So this is his utilitarian style, and then we also sure. have. There we hey! Go. hey, hey! Isn't Joe in the alliance? No, I don't think no. so. No, he can be though. He, he might be. have he submitted some can photos can to our can Instagram be in the before in, in the past. <clears throat> okay, so I've seen him before. How about this, Sylvester? You want to describe Joe for our listeners, yeah. and then I'll take him on. Well, I was gonna say Joe is uh, Joe's got like an Eskimo shaped face is that does that exist eskimo shaped face yeah it doesn't i don't, I don't it know does, what that means i don't know i was throw, i was looking at the uh the, the original that, picture the original photo the, with his hat hood, yeah and, uh but no man i think uh if man this without the hat and seeing the the face and and the beard here in this photo is really really cool i really like uh, this. i like it and i i would say joe's face shape is probably a heart shaped if yeah, i had to yeah. guess i was about to and say this, we don't see these face shapes mm -mm. very often but Joe's got a heart-shaped face, and uh, he's got uh, really, really sharp, uh, which a uh, heart-shaped face can really accentuate uh, your jaw or your cheekbone. Yeah, he's got a strong cheekbone. So he's got a cheekbone. really strong cheekbone, and I would imagine if he shaved <laughs> it down, he'd have a pretty strong jawline, mm -hmm. kind of like yourself, Jack, when you're not rocking the beard. Yeah. And he, um, so Joe's got salt and pepper hair, uh, and really more salt in the, uh, in the chin area. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the cheek area, and then uh, pepper really throughout the mustache. I mean, he's pretty, I mean, there's some contrast in there, but it's yeah. salt and pepper throughout the entire beard. And what's really cool is that it, 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 it extends into his head hair, too. It looks kind of uh, like Greg's, doesn't it? It, it kind of looks, uh, yeah, very similar to Greg mm. Brzezinski. And so, um, <clears throat> and so Joe is rocking kind of what I would call maybe like a flat top style haircut. Almost. Uh, yeah, just about, about there. It's about an inch and a half from his head, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very straight textured hair. I can tell. Yeah. And it's also very, uh, I wouldn't say it's dense, but it's not thin either. Mm -mm. Uh, so, so it sticks straight up. I would imagine he doesn't have any product in his hair right yeah. now. Uh, but, uh, again, not a fade on the side mm -hmm. uh, or any kind of crop or anything like that, but it's uh, it's grown out a bit. So it's I would say it's about a two or three in yeah, length if like you had three. to relate yeah. it to a car uh, to a clipper uh, and a guard. Uh, but dude, Joe's mustache really pops dude, this in whole, this, this whole thing uh, the whole beard pops. Pops. the whole thing pops. But uh, but it's an incredible mustache and he's got that thing styled and and then the beard is exactly what you would imagine. It's kind of grown out uh, and got some some shape, 
which I like the way he's got this shape for his mm-hmm. for his face shape. Yeah. Uh, the shape in the beard that is, and then he's rocking a black. I would I would like to imagine that it, he is uh, rocking a black shawl. Uh, shawl, <laughs> like of a black shawl styled cardigan. Shawl, okay, a shawl neck. I thought you were talking about like a shawl, <laughs> like he was like from Game of Thrones or something. Like that. He like, might be, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But good look all around, and we'll just say he's in. He's not in his bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> Joe, man, holy cow, do I have some beard envy going on right now? This is this right here is a beard. I really like. Okay. I really, really like this style. And what do you Joe's like about it? If take any sort of example from anyone on the channel, it would absolutely be Greg Brzezinski. Yeah, Because sure. they look really similar in the way that they grow their hair and they grow their beard. So, mm-hmm. Joe, if you go back and watch, you know, a handful of Greg's videos, you can really get a good idea of what you can do as you continue to grow out your beard, especially right around the time of almost, well, I'd say November, where Greg's beard was really long right before he got it shaved off. mm yeah, that's a good style that you know you can experiment with, but you know, man, as you continue for to go for the year, because your beard is so dense and there's no patches I can see on this thing because it's coming in really even. There are a lot of styles that he can try out. I mean, he can try putting a French fork into there. He can try, oh, he can braid the thing if he wants. Yeah, it's straight enough <laughs> if he wants to do it. This dude is follically blessed. Yeah. Now, if he wants to do anything with the hair, I'd say just continue to grow it out. Again, use Greg as an example. We've got a video coming out probably at the end of the week where Greg tries out a whole bunch of different styles with his hair now that it's long. And, man, he can take some great example from that. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to say, like, in terms of styles that you see that well, he could try out? I just think if he's going for a year, right, yeah. that's what the goal yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, he's is, trying to go for a year. I mean, you just got to grow it out, man. Uh, and I think every three to six months, if this is where you're, if this is your launching pad to grow mm-hmm. that year, you may want to consider kind of going the the Malaco style, the Malaco as they call where you it. Go yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where you go like three, you go every three to maybe four months and visit a barber to kind of give it some shape. Because I imagine this beard can get really out of control really fast. I think so. With this uh, with this fella's genetics. Yep. Uh, and <clears throat> so I would recommend just grow it out and do the, the trick to growing out your beard. I think is to take it in strides. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's kind of like running a lap or running a race and then mm-hmm. you take laps around yeah. that race. And so every three months is your first lap. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then every, well, let me retract every three months is a lap. Yeah. So every three months you're kind of setting a new goal and saying, all right, uh, I'm going to either go for a trim and kind of mm-hmm. clip up some of these dead, uh, dead split ends yeah. or, uh, giving it some shape, especially if you if your genetics are to grow out really quickly, mm-hmm. uh, your, your beard out, your beard grows really quickly. Then, uh, set those, uh, set those, uh, those timelines or those, uh, benchmarks, if you will. And, uh, every 120 days, every three months, basically, uh, you're kind of evaluating your situation and going from there. Yeah, taking stock. Uh, as far as the head hair goes, man, I, I like the the shorter hair, big beard look like this. It's a good look. I think it's really cool unless you're going for the full out like 70s down to that's, your like. I think that's what Joe wants to do and is if, go for something really wild. And if you're going to do that and you're set on keeping mm-hmm. your beard, like the long hair with the big yeah. beard, I think will... Will really look majestic on this on, on your uh, yeah. and your style, man. Especially because of salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big fan of staying uh, with your body's natural chemistry. So if you're going gray, rock it with confidence. Uh, and you know, just if you decide to dye it, then just be careful and be mindful of the ingredients Absolutely. that you're putting it onto your skin and your hair. So, uh, but uh, yeah, man, I think I think the way you've got this uh, this look right now is pretty sick. Yeah, absolutely. And he was mentioning like. Can he look professional with the long hair and the long beard? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway is the way you dress. You yeah. know, he said he's a stylish guy. I think you're yeah. going to have no problem, Joe. You have a great beard. You've got great hair. you got nothing to worry about, man. So keep yeah. on growing. And, you know, honestly, one more thing. Mm. One more thing. Oh, here it is. If you're growing out your hair, there we go. always say it. Like when, you, when, you are, when you're rocking a big beard and, you, mm-hmm. you're, and you're rocking – wild hair yeah. you know the key is really in your grooming routine and how, you, and how you take care of it so you want a quality shampoo quality uh, conditioner mm-hmm. uh, you want to have a solid routine for your head here you also want to have a solid routine for your beard but mm-hmm. <laughs> i think once you get to a certain length and you don't want to upkeep do a lot of maintenance on your hair besides mm-hmm. washing it sea salt spray there it is is folks. your friend <laughs> 
I, I, I promise you. I mean, Greg's growing out his hair. Yeah, he's been using it. And all I think time. he uses uh, pretty much sea salt spray he uses as a sea staple. salt spray in the beard as well. Yeah, and he does it in the beard too. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, it's absolutely possible. Just kind of focus on and get a regiment down and find one that works for your hair, for your skin, and for your long hair that you're growing it out. Absolutely. So with that being said, Joe, let's gong him. Let's gong him. <laughs> Here we go. Nick, I'll answer that question at the end. <laughs> I've been thinking about that. Uh, okay, who do we have now? All right, all right, all right. Um, it would help if my computer loaded. Uh-oh. <laughs> two okay. seconds. Yeah, that's all good. we got a younger guy. We had two older gentlemen at the beginning. Now we got a younger guy. To nice. And us off. Definitely in so, his bathroom. All Definitely right. in the bathroom. <laughs> this right. guy's name is... Rise, R-H-Y-S. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Okay, no worries. All right, so he writes, Hi guys, my name is Rise. I'm 21 and from the UK. I've been growing my beard for about seven weeks growth now. Okay. I usually have long stubble and this is my first time letting my my beard grow out. Mm -hmm. My mustache and beard don't connect and I was wondering if there were any styles that play into this well or would suit my face shape. As you can see, my hairline is also receding and I have become a little self-conscious about it. I've always had the same hairstyle probably for 10 years or so with swept across to the right. I don't usually use any product. Are there any styles that might suit my hair or lack of? Well, or any hair product that you would recommend? Mm -hmm. I think I know of one. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for any advice that you can give and I've already found so much helpful, helpful advice on your channel, so thank you already for that. Dope, all right, so. Rise? Right, right. It's R H Y S. R H Y S. Interesting. Rise. I've never heard of Rise. Heard That's that a name. cool name, man. I like that. Yeah, Rise. We're probably saying it wrong. No, we but definitely hey, we're, we're saying it wrong. We're saying it wrong. But you know what? It's okay. <laughs> we're on the internet. We're, we can say whatever we want. <laughs> we're on so, the internet. Uh, Rise is a strapping young man of 21 years old. And I'd say, let's say, between an oval and a rectangular face. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I was going to say rectangular. Rectangle, yeah. Rectangular face, uh, beard is, you know, kind of a young man's beard, what we normally see with that, and that's the growth pattern where it's mostly the thickest on the jawline. doesn't connect, at least from what we can see, to the mustache. Mustache is pretty small, kind of like what mine looks like. Uh, cheek line's pretty damn clean. Good, strong, brown cheekbones, yeah? Uh, let's talk about the hair upstairs, though. Real short in the sides, probably a two, and swept over. He said he's been wearing this hairstyle for about 10 years now. Now, we've got some ideas for this. Uh, he's, let's see... 21, yeah, he's been rocking the same hairstyle since he was 11. Hmm. Reese, that's how you say it. Okay, I had a ah, feeling you were saying it wrong. All nice. right, so Reese is wearing Apologies. a... Yeah, it's all right. Thanks, Victor. Thanks, Victor. <laughs> nice to hear from Victor. Um, so he's just got it swept over. No real hard part or anything like that. Just kind of brushed over. All right, let's take him on, man. Reese, Yeah. So, years old. Uh, Randa, can you remind me what Reese is, um, of what his uh, goal is here? His goal is to find a hairstyle that makes him feel confident. Okay. And his mustache and beard does not connect, so he was wondering a good style for that. Okay. And I also thoughts. have a reference photo for his hairline, if that helps. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay. All right, we got something. We got something. Yeah, man. Um, you, you know, so what I would recommend you do, Reese, is number one, I would grow grow this out. Okay. I would grow this the out. The beard or the hair? The head hair. I'm going to okay. start with the head hair. Sure. Uh, I would grow it out, uh, and I don't know. Is that a receding hairline there, Jack? It's just a high hairline. It's just a high hairline. That's line. not okay, a receding. Cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. So, uh, you know, I think the number one uh, strategy uh, for this, for finding a style that works for you, number one, you got to be willing to take risks and try mm-hmm. new styles out. Yeah. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is to grow it out. Mm-hmm. Grow it out, grow the sides out, uh, and maybe in a month's time or a month and a half, uh, go check in with uh, your barber, and in that in that month time frame, identify a few styles that you like, uh, mm-hmm. because it's. I mean, I could sit here and give you a couple of styles, in which I will. I'll share a couple of thoughts there. Sure, yeah, but, I'm, in, I'm interested in what you have to say. But take a couple of styles and say, hey, these are the three styles I want to try mm-hmm. over that 30, 30 to forty five day window, and say, and then narrow it down to one style and mm-hmm. say, this is a style. When I go to the barber, I'm going to try this style. And then I would rock that style, and you'll know right away when you mm-hmm. leave the barber chair, you'll know if that was the style that works for you yeah. or if it doesn't work for you. 
Um, but then set another 30 to 45 day benchmark and okay. grow it back out. Sure. And then try the second hairstyle that you choose. Uh, but I think personally, I like, uh, for, for yourself, if it were me, I probably would keep, uh, I would probably keep a fade on the side, mm -hmm. uh, for your style specifically. I would do, and you can do your fade in a couple of ways. One, you can have like a pretty high fade where it kind of goes up to that, uh, to that line in your, in your temple. Okay. Uh, and, and do something that's, uh, that kind of comes back, kind of angulars itself mm -hmm. like on an angle. Yeah. And your barber will know. I mean, he's going to work with you one on one. But I think that a pretty high fade will look really well. And then keeping the hair, um, I would say textured, like scissor cut. And I don't know that I would push it back because depending on how you put, you might be combing it forward to kind of cover some of your 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 the the higher hairline, the higher hairline there. Yeah. But I would it. I wouldn't necessarily comb it back. I would use some sea salt spray. There we go. <laughs> I really would because for, for short hair like this or for mm -hmm. hair like this, uh, you want to have more of a texturized look. You don't want to have okay. a weighed down wet look. Okay. Uh, you want to have, uh, you want to kind of like style it almost like a Daniel Craig, uh, you know, okay. in, in, a, in a Daniel Craig kind of way. Sure. Uh, and that's really the, the hair that I kind of see for yourself here. Mm -hmm. And if you want to keep it pushed forward, you can still achieve that. Uh, with a uh, styling balm or sea salt spray, you can achieve that look by just kind of blow with a little bit of a blow dryer mm -hmm. and then a little bit of like your fingers being able to kind of just play with it and texturize it. So where it kind of just falls naturally where you would expect it to. Yeah. Uh, but I think that would complement your overall appearance really well. And then you want to maintain that appearance uh, for, you know, on a regular basis, whether that's every three weeks or that's every two weeks or if you're crazy every week, like some I used to do. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, with visiting the barber, but, uh, the, uh, as far as the beard goes and the mustache connecting, I mean, there's not much you can do about that mm -hmm. as far as genetics are concerned. But what I would say is, uh, is try to grow that mustache out a little bit longer. And if your mustache is growing at a slower rate than your beard, mm -hmm. that's okay. Uh, keep the beard in check. Like you're currently doing with the neckline, with the cheek line and keeping it cropped. I like the shorter style beard on this fella. Yeah. I, was I, I think say, the corporate think beard is really, really him. nice, Yeah, but I wouldn't touch the mustache at all. I would just okay. let that baby grow. Uh, and it's kind of like yourself, Jack. I mean, you know, this is not a knock at you at, in any kind of way, but <laughs> no, your no, mustache no. does grow a little bit slower, yeah, right? Yeah, we're, we're in a similar boat. This guy but once you get out to that 40 day mark mm -hmm. that and beyond, like, right. It really kind of just kind of takes it just off, kind of takes off. It yeah. kind of fills in on its own. Mm -hmm. So uh, and if you can't grow that mustache out, then just rock what you've got by using a little bit of mustache wax. And like mm -hmm. Jack does, Jack pushes his to the side. Uh, I don't know. Are you using a blow dryer these days, Jack, for that? These days? No. OK, so there you go. And you can you can achieve that pretty well with uh, some of the mustache wax. It'll kind of help. Uh, keep that out of your lip. It's not a hard hold mustache wax by no, any means. No, it's a nice natural one. But it's nice and natural. Water soluble mm -hmm. is going to wash out really quick and easy. So sweet. All right, yeah. man. I like that. I, I also think. like the, the again. I'm a big fan of the uh, of the solid colored shirt without any print on them. But it's always a good choice. Uh, this one is really kind of cool too because it has a little bit of texture and it. it's kind of got that mm -hmm. gold and blue. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of that like natural yeah like, feeling to it. It kind of reminds me of a '70s sport coat. Uh, oh, like yeah, a yeah. like a uh, like a wool sport coat, but oh, in a but more modern twist. Okay, it's kind of cool. I like. Yeah, it. I, can, I can get into that. Yeah, I had a lot I like to say. It. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 and it was all good stuff, and I really like that. So you were kind of recommending more of like a grown out style kind of thing. I've got another thought. Try this one on for size. All right. Now this might be totally out of left field, but I'd like to see him with kind of a classic side part. Now we've got this really good video that we did a really long time ago, back in like. I think it was like August of 2017. It was like a great hairstyle, great side part for guys with a higher hairline. Mm, yeah. Mahesh did it. And it's this really good haircut. And I'm seeing it look really well on our guy Reese right here. Now, if he wants to check out that video, that's on him. You know, if he wants to see it. I don't know. There's something kind of leaning me towards that really kind of timeless style of the side part. And I don't know, man. Maybe. Just maybe we try out a little bit of like... Not go f straight for like a palmate or something like that, but maybe putting like a styling balm when his hair's wet and just give a little bit more of that harder hold look. I, I just want to see what that looks like. I know mm. 
the wet look, or not, it, it, it's not going to give them the wet look, but something kind of similar to that more 20 style, I think might look I just really good for him. I, can see I don't that. know. And then on the, the beard, I would take in the heel just a little bit more and really structure the side and the bottom. Nice. Just yeah. to add a little bit more depth to the jaw. And right? would you recommend he take that out, that task on his own? So he could. Little, it gets a little tricky when you're he, doing He this could, but I don't think he should. <laughs> okay. I think I'd definitely leave that to a barber. I know yeah. I've messed up my heel plenty of times. Yeah. Trying to get a little ambitious with the razor, even if I've been to a barber and he's done it for me, and I go, oh, okay, I can yeah. try this myself now. I agree. I do it at least the first time with the barber. Maybe the t- first two times with the barber. Then once you really get a good handle on it, then you can kind of go for it. Maybe you're on your own every two weeks, but at least once a month, man, go visit the barber and have him shape that thing up. Okay. Yeah, I like it. So uh, there, so there were some guys in the comment in the chat referring to this uh, to the Reese as um, Sam. Sam from, from Game of Thrones. From Game of Thrones. Yeah, Sam. I think he's got some good inspiration. He uh, does. Or he could offer some good inspiration for hairstyle, beard style. He he does it really really well. Yeah, if you see him on um, who was it? One of the late night shows he went on. He actually had a really good hairstyle. So, yeah. Reese, cool. if you want to check that out, who knows? We'll see. All right. Anything else? Gong him. Gong him. Let's gong him. All right. There we go. That was a nice one. All right, so there we go, guys. That is our style consultation. So let's move into our main topic of today, and that is the modern man. The modern man. So you got to ask yourself, are you a modern man? I don't know. Maybe by the end of this episode, you might be. You might find yourself as one. Now, this is interesting because, Sylvester, you and I discussed this topic before, but we didn't really go into it together and we did that on purpose because i wanted to have this was more of an organic dialogue today yeah so we kind of broke this down into two sections so the modern man what does he look like Hmm. and how does he act so we've got appearance and actions i want to let you kick this off man like oh you want me to kick it off yeah in your your mind because i kind of want to come back with my own thoughts i want to see what you have to say first though because you so often have these great thoughts well i mean you know we could talk about appearance Mm -hmm. i think i think from my perspective it it's it's two it comes in two forms the modern man comes in two forms one external sure and one internal okay okay so you've got external Mm -hmm. uh dealing with the way you dress Mm -hmm. Uh, the shoe, everything from the shoes you wear yeah, to shoes up. if you decide to wear a hat, the hat you wear, yeah, uh, and everything in between the appearance of mm-hmm. yourself from style, right, right, uh, whether you wear, uh, and it's not necessarily that baggy jeans are bad because baggy jeans are not bad. They're not. You don't wear baggy <laughs> jeans. The, my point is, is that you wear jeans. You're intentional about the mm-hmm. jeans that you choose because you, they fit your body type. Right. So a little you, bit more mindful right. of the things. So it's not so much. Uh, I think with when it comes to external mm-hmm. appearance, sure. That the modern man, pardon me, the modern man pays attention to. He's intentional rather mm-hmm. about how he dresses. Yeah. Uh, how he keeps his what he keeps in his closet. Right. Uh, and how he grooms himself, right. how he chooses to take care of his body, mm-hmm. uh, and how they, what they maybe even consume in, as far as diet is concerned. Uh, and I'm not saying you got to be crazy strict on no, yourself. No, no. This is not about finding. This is not about identifying rules. This is right. about identifying uh, values mm-hmm. and things that you can place value over that will help. Right. With your external appearance. Okay. So, in you know, like choosing to opt for a blow dryer is, I'm not saying that that's a, a trait of a modern man, mm-hmm. but I'm saying that by using a blow dryer, mm-hmm. you might be, that would serve the purpose of being intentional in your appearance. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of guys would say, oh, screw the blow, the blow dryer. That's a woman's tool. Or yeah. That's a woman's thing. Yeah, it turned you know, into a like, card, right? But it's like, no, man, it's like, it's just like having a hammer Mm-hmm. In your in your tool chest or in your box, yep. it's you know you don't throw the hammer away because it's uh, I don't know whatever reason you want to say. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tool to help you accomplish a goal. And again, it goes back to being intentional. So mm-hmm. external, right? You're intentional in your dress. You're intentional in your appearance. You're intentional uh, with what you choose to put in your body because uh, you want to not necessarily be uh in peak physical condition Doesn't have to be, but no. you and and for some guys that might be the goal it might be to be Could in be. peak physical condition and yeah. that's great but uh at least be mindful and be careful of what you're feeding your body mm-hmm. uh, because your body ultimately gives you life or food right. ultimately gives you life um mm-hmm. and also it feeds into your hair 
uh, you know, yeah. what you put into your body, whether that's water oh, yeah. or healthy foods. Uh, I mean, we talk about using, uh, getting like green, le- uh, greens, uh, leafy greens, dark leafy, uh, greens, yeah. dark leafy greens and like cashews and mm-hmm. things like that to help, uh, stimulate hair growth naturally. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, you just got to be mindful. Mm-hmm. So again, to, re- to go back is being intentional externally. Right. So now okay. the internal part for me sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. is, uh, is, is taking care of yourself internally. That means taking care of your mind mm-hmm. starts with your mind. Yeah. And that's whether that's, uh, you know, you set up a uh, time for going on walks or whether you practice meditation or you hit the gym or mm-hmm. you run on the treadmill or you run outside, uh, outdoors, you know, like being, again, it goes back to being intentional mm-hmm. about how you serve the internal person, the internal being. Right. And so, uh, I think that, uh, the modern man is focused on those things being intentionally on the exterior in, right. intentional and then on the interior being intentional, um, yeah. his person, uh, not for, not to serve himself, but to ultimately serve others. Right. And so if you were to ask me, well, Hey, what does the modern man look like? Sure. I think he's intentional externally. Mm-hmm. He's in, uh, intentional internally. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of, uh, when you first threw this topic out at me, I kind of was like, Oh man. Yeah. Like chivalry is not dead. You know, that was the, the mindset that I was going to lead in with Yeah, is that I think that the modern man kind of pulls a little bit from the, the old, old school, school yeah. man, mm-hmm. brings it into the present right. and also looks into the future man mm-hmm. and brings that into the present. And that's what I would probably say is a modern man. He's not an asshole. <laughs> he's not, uh, you know, he's not doesn't uh not serve his family his okay. friends his circles of influence his right. colleagues and people that he surrounds himself with mm-hmm. he serves himself so that he can in turn serve others okay and so in my take i think that that's a, a good for my for me if you were to ask me my personal opinion i mm-hmm. think that that is uh my outlook on on what the modern man is it's just to recap internal yeah. external Right. right. Intentionality. Okay. Reaching from, from, learns from, from the past, from, yeah. learns, learns from the past mm-hmm. and, maybe, and maybe and even his them. mistakes sure. that he's even made or okay. the mistakes that others have made. Right. Pulls that into the, to the present, mm-hmm. looks into the future to see what's ahead and, mm-hmm. and how we can protect and, and provide for our families and our friends and ourselves and our circles of influence. Right. Brings that into the present mm-hmm. and you're, you're an intentional man. Yeah. So that, I don't know, man. That's I like that. kind of my take. He sounds like a hell of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go. I like that. You're there out is... there. You're going to say he sounds like me. Yeah, he sounds. No, no, like, <laughs> he sounds like a jackass. He sounds like Jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he sounds just like Jack Malaco. Uh, no, good. but I, I like, like that. that. I like that you didn't go for the great things like yeah, he wears a suit every day. Yeah, he gives charity every day. Or yeah, he's work. He's at the gym all the time or whatever. He's because I think a lot of people. You know, when you say modern man, they're like, oh, he's this sissy kind of guy. He's this self-hating kind of guy. Mm-hmm. He's this, you know, it, it, it loses this masculinity. No. The right. modern man can be masculine. Yeah. The modern man can absolutely be masculine. And it goes back to that one word you kept saying throughout your entire thing. Intentionality. Yeah. Right? I agree. I think the modern man is a guy who recognizes that he, he can take care of himself. He does make that conscious effort to take care of himself and others around him because yeah. he's learned how to take care of himself and how to take care of his mind and his body and his appearance and his actions show with that with that yeah. intentionality i really like that i mean it sucks that you know we don't have like this big debate you know where it's like oh i think it's this way and you think it's that way but it, i think that we do kind of have that <laughs> same idea of like the modern man is he's a good person yeah you know, he knows how to take care of others and doesn't have to be necessarily always oh, going out and you know like i said giving a charity every single day or you know giving out to the community all the time. But, you know, he knows that it's there and he knows that he can do it. It's, you go back to that idea of the blow dryer as the most simple, basic boiled down of it, <laughs> boiled down thing of it. Yeah. The modern man knows the blow dryer is there. If he makes the choice to use it, okay, that's, that's fine. Just knowing that it's there and that he acknowledges that he can use it is a great thing as a tool, you know, that you yeah. can put that tool to use to make yourself look better and feel better about yourself and if you feel better about yourself, maybe your life starts to feel a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, part of taking yourself, which, you know, talking about the modern man, I mm-hmm. guess, and not that we 
are coining that uh, no, in no, any no. kind of way. We're just it's more of a topic of conversation, but an opportunity for you to uh, invest in yourself is coming up yeah. right next week. Yeah, with absolutely. With the yeah. Alliance Conference. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the whole conference is going to be full of modern It's going to be, yeah, you know, we'll, we're, it's going to be a two-day event right here on the Beard Burn campus. Yes, sir. One day is all about self-improvement. The, the inward part of, you, of a man, I guess, uh, or a person. The and internal, then, yeah. Yeah, the internal. And then the, uh, the second day is going to focus on the external, which yeah, is your style. And, uh, and so, and then on top of all of that, mm -hmm. uh, which will help with the style part of it and the external part of it is the opportunity to get a haircut from Jake, the barber, right here in these chairs, man, Mahesh is coming in from, uh, from England. the UK, from mm -hmm. England. And he'll be right here in this room actually mm -hmm. with us next week. Yeah. Uh, and this, uh, this room will be filled oh, it's with gonna be a, fun episode next a week. lot of cool, a lot of cool guys who take care of themselves internally and externally, such as mm -hmm. Eric, uh, such as Carlos, Yourself, myself, well, I mean, it's going to be a riot of a party mm -hmm. and time. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. So, Riot of a time and party. <laughs> absolutely, what I man. It's going to be a full, <laughs> it's gonna be a full week, man. It's and gonna we're going to have week. everybody here on the next episode. Hopefully, we'll be tagging in and out of all, all types of different people. You know, Greg, Mahesh, Carlos, Eric, you and me, Randa, the whole gang's going to be here. Yeah, man. and there's another Greg that's actually coming. Greg Tuberville, that's right, right here yeah. in the comments. Guys, if you um, are coming to this, you are absolutely more than welcome to be a part of this. Yeah, and, and so, is, so is Arthur, mm -hmm. uh, or as he likes to, to go by, Bud. Uh, Bud will be here, and okay. uh, and then Randy uh, will be here as well. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then also, um, Michael. Michael, that's Michael's right. Michael's in the uh, chat with us sometimes here. Yeah, so. Michael Basford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really well. Looking well to not Basford. Oh, Michael no. Basford will be here for oh, the okay. event, but Michael um, Chavez. Oh, really? Our yeah, friend yeah, Michael yeah, will from be here from, from Houston. last year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah he's yeah, coming I'm back, really and he'll be that. he'll be with us hanging out in this room on Tuesday too. So yeah, Michael's a great guy. I'm really looking forward. A lot to of that. fun, man. So this is going to be a really fun event. All sorts of modern men will be present. So if they don't know what a modern man is, just watch a couple of the videos that we film while we're here. You know, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a, a good example of, of what the modern man is. I'm excited about it. And yeah. uh, if you haven't gotten yourself a ticket and you're interested in that, uh, I'm sure there's a, a, a link in the description of the video uh, mm -hmm. where you can find out more information. I think we've only got like a few more seats left. Yeah. Uh, so be sure to snag one while they uh, while they are available. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a fun time, guys. So, yeah, man. so now we will turn the chat over, or not chat, the stream over <laughs> to you guys, the show, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll answer some questions if you're uh, so interested in having some questions answered. So one I did see earlier that has been, man, keep me awake at night. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, it was uh, Nick. Nick Bird asked. He's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, have what you guys is, been noticing a trend of more negative comments lately you know and how do you deal with that do they get to you do they do they bother you and I'll, i mean i'll just come out and say it yeah man they absolutely do bother me and I, i'm fine to admit that but it's okay to realize you know it's like you know you just take it as it is it's just people's opinion man Speaking yeah. of opinions here comes one right or opinions here comes people right here <laughs> doing a little walk here you want to jump into the hot chair yeah hey, come on in chair Oh my God, Jack! You've been farting. <laughs> He's kept it warm for you, it's, man. It kind of stinks in here. <laughs> what have you guys been doing? Uh, yeah. It is kind of warm. <laughs> What's going on in there? We are we on our questions yet or no? Uh, we were just about to move on. We were just answering one from Nick, uh, who was asking about haters and comments. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. Criticism. I was, I was replying to that. Yeah. It's because. Yeah, you know, I don't like, to, you know, I kind of have um, this rule in my life. Like, I don't take pressure. I don't give pressure. Yeah, that's a good one. And, uh, you know, obviously, I don't take hate, and, and I don't deliver hate yeah. as well. And it, it gets frustrating that as part of this role, we get exposed to hate um, for just sharing, like, what we're passionate about, sharing our right. beliefs, or sharing um, things that we're not even, like, pushing our, way, our own way. Like, the whole mullet thing. Like, all y'all out there... <laughs> With a mullet, like, I swear, like, half the people didn't even watch my first video where I'm like, yeah, it's back, but it's going to be back for, like, those fashion-forward people yeah. who are looking to, to hang on to a movement. It's not going to be popular for everyone. <laughs> and uh, it's a cool style because you can really only do, like, fades and, and um, you know, side parts and crew cuts for right. so long before you need to have something different. So, yeah. 
Or it's it, like the mustache too. Like when people yeah. rock only the mustache and then they're like, oh, that's, uh, I don't know. But yeah, the mustache it's, got so much hate like five like, or 10 years ago. Did. And now fortunately people are a little more keen to it. And I think that's kind of where we're at in the mullet is like in a few years, people yeah. will just be like, okay, yeah, it's a little shaggy hairstyle. Right. Not, you know, I don't like the word mullet, but the way the mullet is actually cut looks pretty cool. That's what everyone says. It's like, right. I hate the mullet, but this is actually a pretty good looking haircut. And it's right. like, yeah, that's the point. Right. Like you're triggered by a word. <laughs> And you're like, you're because you're triggered by a word, you're just like completely blocking off so many things in your life. Um, yeah. And now it's like the thing that a lot of guys are wearing. Yeah. I so. mean, you were down uh, downtown South by Southwest. Yeah. Uh, we see people from all over the world come down and yeah. like, that's, that's what people are wearing. Yeah. And it's not, to, again, when I say that's what people that's wearing, it's like. Not everybody. Like, like the people who have the balls to take fashion. Rules, right. Agree. Right. It's I not agree. for, you know, your, your. Your dad and your, you know, your granddad and, you know, your, um, I don't know, what's a really conservative type of role that you financial advisor, right? Yeah. The financial <laughs> advisors of the world, uh, insurance <laughs> agents, they're not going to be wearing mullets, but dudes like me and you, if you had hair. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I would wear mullet. And maybe Jack. We'll get Jack wearing it. <laughs> and Greg. And Greg, Greg Turberville. Yeah, Greg Tuberville. <laughs> He's going to be rocking a mullet here. Yeah, I was uh, I was uh, downtown at the kickoff for South by, and dude, I can't even count how many guys I saw rocking a mullet. And I was like, in one sh in one fashion or another, whether it was like the the real discreet mullet or if it was the real hard mullet, yeah. you know, like I uh, I think it's man, just be open, man. Like, it doesn't matter. That, it's not yeah, you. that's the modern man, right? A dude yeah. that, that like <laughs> has the confidence to just be able to to do what he he wants to do and feel confident with it, rather than feeling this pressure because of a certain word right. or yeah. Because of what his, you know, friends say or what other YouTubers create and say, you know, it's just like be your own person. Yeah. That's a modern man. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. There you go, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I I F all those haters. From, right? from our... We're going to delete your comments. I don't yeah. care. Because <laughs> I got power over you. <laughs> you got a problem? I'm just going to delete your comment. <laughs> what now? Well, on that note, we have a question from our old producer, Josh oh, Lawson. Josh! What's up, Lawson? I'm sorry I took over, um, but we miss you greatly. Not I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm That's saying. Different. But uh, Josh says, what would you guys say is the most versatile hat to wear? I'm looking to add one to my wardrobe and I, wardrobe, and I don't know where to start. So that's probably knows a thing or two about that. Oh, I know a little bit about hats. Uh, man, I think the most versatile, absolute hat josh is probably the dad hat uh and i think you've got a, a couple of good hats in your wardrobe man i remember you uh pulling out a couple of like just ball caps and i think for anybody looking to get into the hat game that's a good place to start i mean you know but the baseball hat isn't didn't just come around recently like the dad hat it's been around for quite a long time uh and i i don't know history like that very well but I think that it uh, it started back in the baseball era, with the uh, with the five I think it's a five panel hat, five panel hat, five panel hat, <laughs> and uh, and so six, uh, panel. six panel hat, <laughs> 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 whatever hat that yeah, is. Yeah, it, it doesn't have the cardboard in there either. Exactly, and it's kind of got like this real soft, uh, you know, head. The way it goes, it kind of shapes naturally to your head or falls where where it naturally is because it doesn't have the, it's not like the uh, the flat bill hat. Uh, but I think the I think a five panel hat is the way to you can introduce if you're if you're not down with the dad hat go with the five panel hat because that's gonna kind of get you warm to that. Uh, but if you want to take it up a notch, um, you know I, I tend to be. So where's the hat you were wearing yesterday? Oh, that flap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the hat Sylvester is wearing. Josh, come by the beer brand office. And uh, Sly so will show you his new hat. It looks <laughs> it looks pretty dope, and I bet you that look like super dope on you with like your hair. Oh but hell I, yeah! Because remember, uh, Randa, can we pull it up when we did that Copenhagen collaboration? It's called uh, Horns Cove. He's great. Um, and he was a hat maker, and mm -hmm. it was like these fedoras, and I think like those kind of hats would look super dope on. Uh, well. Yeah, you know, Josh rocked. On Josh. Josh took one of my hats, my one of my fedoras, went in the office one day and. He literally looked like James Bay. Like I was like, had to take a double take, yeah, because uh, his hair is like was like long and it was coming out, uh, and then he had the hat kind of 
uh, he was just playing around, I think, and it, I, unintentionally it just kind of looked really good on him. So, yeah, I would even go for the uh, for a good fedora. Is uh, are we getting close to the? Yeah, yeah. There's a blog article. Yeah, so we there's this hat maker. You were you were here with the company. The no, time, not right? yet. No? That was, was pre, pre your time. Yeah. yeah. So Carlos has this um, connection with this hat maker out of Denmark, actually, and uh, we did these like three beaver felt hats that. We also did a video. So if you Google like YouTube, uh, either beard brand hat making or urban beardsman hat making, mm -hmm. you'll see like how the hats are actually made. And uh, they just look super cool. All right, here we uh, go. Oh, I might do the wrong one. We could Sorry. drop the link in the uh, chat as well. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. That was the but, but we should have like a, like a blog article just do Google search beard brand Horns Cove and we'll get there. Yeah. So do we got the photos of the hat on that? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Those three hats. Yeah. So I think kind of the one of the dude, uh, how do I work this? <laughs> oh, I can't do my finger. That one, <laughs> that one the one on the right. I think that hat is, is cool. Are there more photos? Scroll. Yeah, there so there's the video is, that we, yeah. we were talking about. You'll have yeah. to watch it. That is on the Beard Brand channel. But anyways, yeah, I've probably hijacked uh, this a little bit more. I'm going to gong me out. <laughs> gong him. Yeah, that was a good one. Just as he arrived, he is now gone. His chair is warm. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get like a fan right off camera that just blows on you me. You know, they there. say to leave things how you found them, if not better. Yeah. <laughs> Came in hot, left in hotter. <laughs> um, all right, how about we answer a few more questions that we get yeah, out of man. here, man? I'm starting I'm to in. sweat. All right, Jacob asks, how long should I wait to create my neck and cheek line? Jacob, that depends on how fast your beard grows. Some guys like to take a month, some guys like to take uh, two weeks. I took two weeks to do mine. What was the question? How long should he wait to define his cheek lines and his neck line? Because, you know, we, we usually recommend guys growing it all out, and then, <laughs> then they do it. And yeah, then, uh, I, think, yeah. I think that it depends on your genetics and how fast your hair grows, uh, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 days is always the, good, is the benchmark it, that I'm going to suggest. Yeah. Uh, without touching any of your mustache, any of your you know, neckline, any yeah. of your cheek line. Uh, if you can grunt and bear it, if your hair grows out super fast, grunt and bear it for those 30 days. That 30-day threshold that's is... A, that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a good threshold for, what, for anybody who, if you've got great genetics and your hair grows out super fast, mm -hmm. or if you're a little bit more on the slower end, uh, 30 days is really the, the tipping point. Or yeah, the, that's usual the, guys the, do The it. minimum. Yeah. But I was laughing at, I was laughing a little bit at Craig. Craig, rather, because he was like, what's so special in your phone? I was looking for the blog. Craig. Oh, were you looking for the I was trying blog? to help Randa. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were what happened at the comments. It was Josh the clean lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. no. Josh uh, used to produce the stream, and he was our social guy. Yeah. Hmm. Next question. Anyway, what next question? If you go for two weeks, go to a barber like Jack did. Yeah, absolutely. Remember that when I was like growing mine out and when we saw Ricky and yeah. my beard was just looking kind of gnarly. I'm oh, everything about me was looking kind of gnarly yeah. at that point. And then we went and saw Ricky down at South Austin Barber Shop and he set me up real nice. Yeah, he took care of you. I need to get back in the, the barber's chair, man. It's been a while. Yeah. Last buddy. time I was in one, I was with Antonio when we did the lines. Uh oh. I'm starting to get the unintentional mullet. You might have a good opportunity next week. I was about to say, hey, Mahesh, <laughs> visit. We'll get that, uh, that fabulous fade that he's known for. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, guys, if we got any more questions, we'll uh, take them now. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be getting out of here in just a few minutes. Yeah. Cla uh, Classic Monkey asked if I was going to be growing out my hair uh, or my beard. Mm. And uh, I won't be growing out my hair. No. Uh, no Not going to do I, the Mahesh? No. And... No, <laughs> no, just that's it. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, but no, I think uh, as far as the beard is, I haven't had any inspiration to really grow my beard back out. Like I know I got a beard stash. Right I now. got a beard, like a, a very patchy beard, if mm -hmm. you haven't noticed. Um, but uh, so if I'm not willing to commit to like the full thing and just kind of let it grow for a whole year, yeah, then I'm probably not going to like 
I'm probably just going to stick to short stubble yeah. uh, and keep a, a mustache, but I'm about to change it up here in a bit for, for the Alliance Con and just kind of clean things up and I don't know. We'll see what comes of that. Yeah, we'll see. But something maybe fresh for spring and, and summer. Yeah, tidy it all up. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Sweet. How about this one? Okay, I keep seeing this question asked. I can barely grow a beard on the side of my face. I only have a couple of hairs. Should I shave them off or keep it? What do you think about this? This guy seems to be having a patchy beard. This Preto de Zimbabwe. Preto um, Zimbabwe. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Let me see. I can barely grow a beard on the side. So he's not getting so much on the side, just a few hairs. And I only have a couple of hairs. Should I shave them or keep them? Well, man, couple. define a couple. Yeah, that's hard to say. If it's one or two, shave them. If it is literally a couple, <laughs> yeah, literally just two, I'd shave Yeah, I would, I would shave them, man. Um, and then, but if you've got a patch like I do right here. Those like middle ones, yeah. I know I got one right here for sure. Mm. But yeah, if you've got a patch like that, uh, I say keep it short. Yeah. Uh, either keep it short or really grow it out long. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, keep it short. Maybe yeah. like just kind of like a short stubble. Maybe we should do a, a series on how to rock incredible stubble because uh, that Good might beard. help some of our guys who yeah. uh, are looking to change things up or guys who maybe have a patchy beard. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can rock some really good stubble if you've got a patchy beard. You just want to keep it short, keep it clean, yeah. be intentional. Stubble, stubble's great. Stuff. <laughs> I don't think a lot of guys notice that. I mean, obviously there's a lot of guys right now rocking stubble, but I think so many people think that like that's not a beard. Of course, that's a beard, dude. If, you, if stubble looks best in you, go for stubble. It's a great style. Yeah. Take care of it, too. Yeah. Th- another great question by Atanas mm. uh, w- it, that w- I think we should address is Absolutely. when should I use a beard oil and when should I use utility balm? Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Well, it depends on which one you want. You really don't need to use both of those on your face. It's sort of either or. Mm-hmm. I like to use, well, lately I'm doing beard oil because I like the shine, but Typically, I'm a utility balm kind of guy. Yeah. And utility balm is great because you can follow it up with some styling balm right after. But you can do that with beard oil as well, you know? So it's really, what do you want? Do you want something that you can rub right into your skin also? I mean, you can do that with beard oil as well. But yeah. do you want something that you can rub, you know, into your head hair, into your hands? That would be more of a utility balm. And if you want that more matte look, that's a utility balm. But what do you think, man? I think I got a couple thoughts on this. One sure. is you got to keep in mind that utility balm and beard oil are designed to serve the same exact purpose. Right. Beard oil is a liquid, mm-hmm. so it's going to be easier to apply in your hand, right. apply to your beard, apply to your hair, apply to your skin. Uh, the other thing is, is that utility balm is a solid type of product. Mm-hmm. It's got a little bit of beeswax in it, and it's made up with a bunch of butters. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, y- you know, the thing about utility balm is you can apply it to your skin like – uh, instead of using maybe cologne, you can mm-hmm. apply it to like your pulse areas yeah. here, here, uh, which I do. If, I, funny enough, I found myself using both oh, yeah. um, because I will use utility balm to rub in the pulses of my area on, onto my skin, oh, yeah. onto my chest, onto my neck. Okay. And then I take the rest and I kind of put it and I keep myself a, like pretty bald fade on the side. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like you rub it into that there. and then uh, I rub it into this, but I take before doing that, I take a little bit of beard oil mm-hmm. right out of the shower right. and apply it to my mustache okay. and also to the sides All right. um, because I like beard oil, right. uh, but I also like how multifaceted utility balm is and mm-hmm. that you can apply it anywhere on your body. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the final thought I have about that is if you're deciding between the two and you can't get both mm-hmm. and you're concerned about uh, budget, we'll yeah. say, uh, the utility bomb is an incredible product because it comes in a 3.4 ounce yeah, jar. Yeah, I would say if that's like your first thing, I would get that. Yeah, and that's going to go a lot. It's going to go. It's going to last gonna be a little able to longer. Stretch it. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be able to get more more bang for your buck with that if that's yeah. the issue. But mm-hmm. if you can get both, because they both serve but, they serve the same purpose, but you can use them in different ways. That's tough though, because you know so many people are like beard oil. That's the name of the game. Right? Yeah, everyone wants to yeah. try the Coca Cola. Right. Products. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Who knows? Uh, so that'll do it for that one. Yeah. Utility balm is beard butter, essentially. Kind of. It's like well, beard it's just, butter and more. Yeah. Know? It's tomato, tomato. Exactly. I mean, the way it's known in the marketplaces is beard butter. A lot of guys call it beard butter. Yeah. But beard. the nice thing about utility balm is yeah. you can use it for pretty much everything. We call it utility too, nice. because you can use it anywhere and everywhere. Mm hmm. Get Man, it. We should call out some winners before we get out of here. I just oh, realized that. Time. Holy cow. Yeah, hey. We're, we're going to get out of here without. Get anyone, yeah. Okay, do we have our winners, Randa? Oh, you just turned yourself off. Oh, man. There you go. I had a fear I was going to do that. All right, so we have... Sweet. Chris Lucht, which 
Yeah. Beards and Banjos and the Bearded Stallion. Hey! Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Let me gong them for that. Let's gong them. Oh, three of them. There we go. Dude, we got to yeah. let all the guests. The guests are going to go ham on this thing next week. <laughs> I just realized that. We're going to get like 50 people running up and like gonging this thing. Oh, my goodness. Which is weird because like this was never really intended to be part of the show. We just sort of brought it on one day. Well, like, yeah. It's a part of the show Isn't now. Isn't that fun? Anyway, congratulations, guys. Yeah, man. And hey, thank you so much for everyone who tuned in and watched and submitted and everything. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you're if you around for next week, mm-hmm. uh, be sure to grab a friend and tune in or Absolutely. share the podcast with a friend or a family member. Rate us Let on iTunes. Know. Yeah, give us a rating in iTunes, and uh, and we'll be back next week. And again, we've got a bunch of cool guests uh, yeah, that will be, be joining us one. next week, so you don't want to miss it. And if you do miss it, catch it after the fact. You're going to want to see that one. So, uh, man, mm-hmm. is it time to call it a day? I think so, man. Cool. All right. Well, hey, until next time. Keep on growing. Keep on growing. Keep pushing forward. And we'll see you next week. See ya. Let's get out of here with a gun. Too soft. There we go. Got him.